It's Roger from Mudfoss University taking on the challenge of a lifetime today to explain unified theory in under 10 minutes. So here I go. Premise is that the atomic model is completely wrong. Just follow my reasoning. It's very, very simple. Electrons are tiny little negative particles. Most people accept that. They're very tiny. They're 1,800 times smaller than a proton. Protons are positive and they are much larger. So far, everybody's okay, I assume. There are no neutrons. Now everybody's not okay. There are no neutrons. What does that mean? The core is flooded with electrons. Neutrons would not stick to the core if they were neutral. They just don't do that. The core would obviously, the positives, would be smacked solid together with the electron negatives. Now, at some point, the nucleus becomes completely flooded with electrons, and then it actually will become slightly exceed the neutrality, and the net negative core will repel the further incoming electrons and those electrons cannot attach and will stay at a distance to the core and form orbits. Now I'm going to show you that right now. Okay this is quantum mechanics. That's a, the, the electron. This is the nucleus which is a strong positive with excessive negatives which keep any incoming nev negatives at bay in their orbitals. As it just sits around and doesn't move hard, it's normal stuff. Now it's hot. It's being heated because there's excitation. Now as soon as it flies away, it's light. So we are seeing heat right now. And sooner or later somebody's going to, there it goes, that's light. And that requires invasion by other molecule, by other atoms, uh, electrons. They come in, they bang, 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 until somebody goes flying off as light. Originally, they just poking around at each other, jabbing, and turning it into heat. Well, sooner or later, somebody knocks a guy out, and he goes flying out of the ring. That's light. Okay, so you've seen the example of how the the center of every atom is a positive strongly with negatives surrounding it and that negatives become a little excessive and they keep orbits the electrons coming in in their orbits and that's what creates the quantum mechanics and it seems to work quite well now I'm going to run through this real quick and then I'll explain each one of them <clears throat> the nucleuses will always be slightly exceed neutrality and all incoming negatives are kept away by a net negative core. Electrons cannot attach to that core and they form their orbits, just like we saw with the magnets. Earth is strongly positive. Everything, all electrons are flow to Earth. All static goes to Earth. All electricity will be grounded to Earth. Electrons are attracted to Earth. It attracts all negatives, not only the negatives that are just free floating electricity. It attracts everything that has negatives and everything has negatives. That's the key. There is nothing that does not have negatives. All matter is coated with electrons. All matter. Everything. Every surface, every molecule, every atom is surrounded with electrons. It's like paint. And those electrons are light when they are thrown from their orbits from excitation. That's what light is. Is electrons thrown away from their orbits on the, like, just like flaking off bits of paint. The light leaves the sun in the same manner as a particle thrown from the sun and is unseen in space. It's obviously a particle from space. It obviously impacts with the earth. Light is ether. They've known about that since Plato and before. And it, they used to call them luminous corpuscles, which are little, little, little luminous particles. And they get luminated when they smash into other things, but they are dark matter until they collide. So the ether comes from the sun. It's dark matter until it collides with something like the space station or a comet or the earth or the atmosphere, and it glows because it, that particle has a region surrounding it, which I'll show you in a minute, which it owns, and when it bumps into another guy's region, they glow. That is their nature. Now, I can prove that with the atomic bomb. When it loses all of its electrons, it goes straight up, and the core becomes positive when the compression of all the negatives is interacted, and they just expel themselves. Then the core is positive, and it's repelled from Earth. Gravity is positive mass attraction to all negatives, and all mass 
is positive. It all has a big, strong, positive attraction. It's, it's strong, but over a long, it's, it's weak, but it co covers a long distance. That's the story with gravity. When you have a complete matter, which has positives in the core, it will attract everything there is, because everything else has negatives. It's all in looking for negatives. So anything that's complete has negatives, and light are negatives. That's my statement. That's how gravity works. Okay, my claim is that the compression and crushing of all this material so dense that all the electrons explode away and go flying off into space, vaporize every complete, just a haze of electrons. Everything is vaporized. Now the positive core is now glowing like crazy because it wants back its electrons. And now the, it tries to grab them back in with the mushroom cloud, which is a signature. Now the other signature is this straight up off the earth column which follows this positive core now, which is going to be expelled from the Earth magnetically, because the Earth is positive. It will take every electron, but it won't take a lot of positives. So that positive core goes north, and it will continue up until it ex accepts enough electrons back to become matter, which has both positive and negative, and then it will come back to Earth. Now that's the nature of the atomic model. So, I'm not sure how much time it took me, but I'm done. This is basic, simple, pulsed red laser light, nothing fancy, but there's literally only a little tiny dot in the center here. This is shock wave, exactly identical to a jet fighter going through the sound barrier. We ran that wave through, well, that laser through a Venturi, and if you look very carefully, you will see that that is the actual particle beam and once it hits the venturi it crashes everybody into everybody else's regions and then you get this devastating interaction which creates plasma and acceleration you can see the light wave is accelerating now you also notice if you can notice these particles that are all over these little tiny particles those particles are ether. They are glowing because they are also impacted by this enormous reverse electromagnetic radiation which is from this interaction. And this is the result of those accelerated white particles as they are, come out of the accelerator and they crash the, the carrier particle which is a charged electron, a negative electron coming flying through space just like electricity through a wire and it creates a field around it of polarized ether. That's the same field that would surround a wire using electric, uh, uh, magnetic filings. Identical. Now here's another one from the experiments Rod Warren and I did years ago. That is the particle right there. Boom, boom, boom. As it comes flying through the accelerator, it creates this field. And if you follow this field, it goes right around in a circle. And the reason it goes around in that circle, and all these little bumps are here, is because it's bang, 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 following this charged particle. This is the charged particle. It's losing intensity, as you can see, as it comes away from the accelerator, because it's now crashed into things, and it is decelerating, literally. All right, I just want to do this real quick. You're going to have to look this up. It's a little tricky and not many people understand. It's about the Fraunhofer absorption emission lines. And t hydrogen absorbs a 21 centimeter line. That means that that hydrogen controls an enormous region around itself. Literally like this size. 8 inches, 8.2 inches. Now, you saw the green swish, 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 swish as that electrons come forward, I believe they're spinning. When they're moving, they're spinning because they're moving against other negative particles. They, there's a natural right-hand spin. It's called the right-hand rule. So that's unity, the best I can do. All right, come up to Mud Fossil University. We just went over 40,000 yesterday. Now, we got all of this stuff is up here about electron floods and this and that, and I'm against so Einstein has a debate with an electron, electron one. Einstein has no clothes. Gravitational electron flood theory. Space is no vacuum. It's all up here. And it's all documented. These are the actual light particle pictures and accelerated light, all that stuff. So, 
come up, subscribe, pay attention. God bless you.